Uh, but welcome, and of course, we all were here in Long Beach, and here's a beautiful sunrise in Long Beach. Now, I understand that many of you may have, may not live in Long Beach, or you just come to Long Beach City College and work and don't see anything else. So for the people who do not live in Long Beach, I want to officially welcome you, and we're going to discuss a bunch of trees. So before you can understand what happened or how this came about, I need to take you back in time, back into my youth, somewhere in 2005. I was driving with uh, an alumni from the program, and uh, she was driving. Of course, I was riding. Uh, that's her standing right there. We were an Obispo and Eighth. And she was driving, and when I saw this, there were two things that I said. Number one, could you stop for a second? That happens very often when somebody's driving and I see something interesting. The second thing that I ask, do you have a camera? Which she did. We got out, we were, I was amazed to see this a wonderful tree, the biggest one in my life. And of course, the photos went away, they were, it was not my camera, but I managed to get them. And of course, we went out our way, we kept looking for more trees, and one day, her and I found ourselves at the Luther Burbank uh, restoration fair and I was telling her about the other, other wonderful things that I found and she started ask, she asked me have you approached the historical society which we did right there of course I asked do you have anything unusual rare uh, historic trees mm, apparently from what I got they had none or they had no idea what they were talking about so then we decided to kind of move away from them and then the funny thing this person was there and he said, I know where, th where there's one. It's an eighth in Obispo. And I said, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about blah, blah, blah. And I said, yes. And he said, I remember the two of you. I came out of my car. You were hugging the tree, and she was taking your picture. <laughs> and I said, I don't remember. But pictures don't lie. <laughs> I'm calling this a senior moment, and you cannot get, away, uh, get me out of that. So I, honestly, I don't remember hugging the tree, but I guess I did. And so the photos went away. I lost track of the tree. I knew, I knew there was a tree somewhere in the middle of Long Beach, but I do not really know, didn't really know the location. Later on, I found it disguised as a Christmas tree, and then I took a photo of it in the summer. And of course, I started sending this to many, many plant experts, and they all agree that this is probably the best tree of its kind in the United States, and I will agree with that. So what are we talking about? We're talking about a rock fig. So for the rest of the presentations, you're going to see this. Uh, the common name or the hoity-toity botanical name, whatever you want, we have both. We're going to show some of the features of the plant and also a map of where, more or less, where that tree is located. And if we go back in nature, this is how it grows in Mexico, where the tree is native to. And so we started taking more photos. And for our presentation, this is Brian Hasty. He is uh, the assistant of the horticulture program. And as a definition for a tree, if Brian can climb it, it qualifies to be a tree. All right? That's for our definition and of course it survived a tenting and of course a spray and this is a tree about a week ago it's still doing really really well so when i started looking going around the tree looking for trees the most difficult part of my job looking for trees is that i am short brown and cute because when people see me going around with a camera taking photos of the trees, they always assume that I'm either looking up for their crown jewels in their safe or the meth lab in their garage. And I keep telling them, no, I don't care about anything else but the wonderful tree that you have in your yard. So it became necessary for us to find different methods of uh, getting information. So how do you really determine the size of the tree, considering that most of these pictures were taken in what I refer to as a drive-by shooting. We just went there, got out of the car, took the shot, and drove out of there before the, uh, they realized we were there. So we had to come up with ingenious ways to figure out the size, and this is what we refer to as the Brian method, and that is how many Brian's does it take to get to the top? Let's count, one Brian, two Brian, three Brian, 
for Brian, far, four and a half Brian, Brian is 6.4. So when we add up the numbers, we came to a whopping 31.2 feet, more or less give a little bit of room for uh, error here and there. But that is important, so you will see Brian or some kind of scale around. So when I started going and finding more trees, I started driving around, and of course things started to appear. And more three, uh, trees started to appear until, of course, I came up with my wonderful presentation, Outstanding Trees of Long Beach. So we're not just looking for anything. We're looking for unique. Number one, uh, the uh, oriental, uh, oriental sweet gum in front of uh, El Dorado Park. Uh, those are the only two or the best looking trees in Long Beach. Uh, we're looking for specimen tree. Uh, this uh, pecan in the west side of town is the biggest one in the entire city. We're looking for oldest tree. The pomegranate in Rancho Los Cerritos, planted in 1840, are still flowering and bearing fruit. And of course, very important, they had to be access to them. In many cases, I saw something truly magnificent and two steps to the right, I would have gotten the perfect picture. But Brian always warned me about the headlines. And we managed to avoid any headlines so far because the last thing we want is to have some kind of shameful uh, comment being made to the college. So accessibility had to be there. And of course, with accessibility, I have not uh, captured every single tree. When I started driving around, I soon realized it's not working for me. So then I decided to physically walk every single street in Long Beach, uh, street by street, alley by alley, and so far, I have covered a good 97% of the city. I only need this tiny area. Uh, Cal, State LA, Cal State Long Beach is already done. So that is the only area that I need to cover. And that, of course, will take care of 100% of the city. Some of the trees out here are just a little bit out of the city range. But I just recorded them because they were truly magnificent. Questions at the end? So when we talk about trees, here's some of the important things. If I mention the word crown, I'm talking about the topmost leaf to the bottommost leaf. Uh, the stem or the trunk, of course, will be there. And the branches or the scaffold branches are going to be there. So really important terminology. And of course, one of the most important questions that I always get asked by people, could you recommend me a tree that grows really fast, has good shade, requires no water, has zero litter, and of course, no root damage, and it's not going to break my cement and asphalt. And of course, after thinking for a while, I recommend this. This is a beautiful pine. Of course, you can get it in any color you want, any size, evergreen. Leaves are not going to drop, and a wonderful, wonderful foliage, and of course, wonderful, wonderful stem. We know some couple of things. Number one, trees are living organisms, and there's going to be biological waste, but there's also a lot of good benefit. So when we look at the port or the west side of town, we see areas devoid of tree, and they do not look right. But when we start to bring trees into the picture, we can see drastic changes, like our camphor trees, uh, our jacaranda trees, our Chinese elm trees, our ficus trees, of course, our sycamores, and palm trees are also good, and Chinese flame trees, and of course, pine trees. So those are a few wonderful benefits that the tree provides, plus color. We have wonderful trees that will bear color, ranging from white to pinks to orange, lavender, red, more reddish, uh, more white and yellow, pink, reds, you name them, you can find them in so many trees that you can grow here in Southern California, and they all waiting just to showed you their wonderful color and their beauty. And of course, trumpet trees, golden trumpet trees, a fire wheel tree. And of course, after the flowers, you're gonna get color in the form of fruit, uh, pyrosporum, eugenias, uh, toyans, of course, edible fruit like pomegranate, cones, persimmons, and of course, capsules or dried fruits as your uh, Cape chestnut and more pyrosporum. And of course, the stem. The stem are really beautiful in themselves. They will have different bark, some of them smooth, white, colorful, shredding, furrow, 
you name them. There's just so many types of barks that you can choose the one you want. And of course, this one is perfect for hugging our Ceiba Speciosa. And of course, leaves, different forms, uh, needles, colorful coppery, uh, red with silver, and of course, more coppery colors. And of course, color in the fall. We do have seasons here in Long Beach, and every so often when it gets really cold, by Long Beach standards, we do get wonderful change in color for the trees. And leaves on top of your lawn, that's okay. It's not gonna hurt it. Uh, you have a, uh, beautiful yellows on your mulberries and leaves on your lawn, beautiful, enjoy them. And of course, the wonderful ginkgo will be the best one for golden yellow color, uh, litter in the ground beautifully. And leaves on top of your truck, that's okay. Start driving and spread the color to areas that are devoid of trees. Really, really important. So when we start looking at a simple tree like your evergreen pear is found everywhere. Uh, beautiful flowers, uh, fruit, and a couple of other things. You sometimes need to look a little bit closer. So you have the green leaves, but as the leaves begin to change color, one leaf is not that big of a deal, but when you mass them together, then you begin to see so many colors emanating from the inside. And when you shine them against the sunlight, you can see a wonderful array of colors just from one leaf. So sometimes it's not going to be as showy or as a showy display. But if you look around, you will see wonderful things out of them. And of course, right now, summer has already went by, but we have summer color as in your jacarandas, your Chinese flame trees, your uh, crepe myrtles, and they are exhibiting beautiful, beautiful color as it is this red flowering eucalyptus with these beautiful red flowers. And of course, our seva or silk floss tree with the beautiful pink flowers. Always great to see. And of course, flowers on the floor, not a problem. A lot of people pay a lot of money when they're gonna go to weddings and put flowers for the bride to walk. Trees do it naturally, enjoy them. Uh, coming from our Chinese flame tree. And of course, our Cape uh, uh, African tulip tree, which has a beautiful golden, uh, golden uh, yellow flowers. And wildlife, we just think about ourselves, what about the animals? The animals that make a, uh, their home in their trees, and of course the flowers, hummingbirds that are looking for places to nest and uh, give uh, or raise their young, and of course, our uh, lorikeets need a place to sit and relax and rest. And of course, our kitty cat needs a place to overlook its kingdom. That's very important. Polly wants to take a break and eat a kumquat. That's important. And of course, the stork, while delivering babies, needs a place to rest. And that's going to be at El Dorado Park. And of course, uh, ducks, geese, and wildlife require shade. Because it is hot out there and they have feathers, so they cannot hide from it from the sun unless there's some kind of shady spot. And of course, children need a nice shady spot for watching and caring for the wildlife. That is very important. And speaking about children, recreation. What's the best babysitter? A tree house on top of a tree. Send them up there, don't, uh, don't let them come down and the tree will take very good care of them. If somebody tries to bring them down, throw rocks at them, not a problem. Where are they gonna learn how to be pirates and learn how to sail the uh, boat? A tree house uh, shaped like a boathouse, and rules and regulations. Where are they going to learn how to be wonderful members of society, if not with the help of trees? And of course, as they go to college, then they're going to enjoy the beauty of trees when they throw their frat parties. And of course, when they go to college, where are you going to hang their junk and the things that drove you nuts on top of trees? And once they go away and they don't come back, now you can enjoy your own life and build the jungle that you always wanted and just enjoy wildlife in the serenity of your home and just put a bunch of birdhouses to the top. So that's really, really important. So with all those wonderful benefits of tree to, or the tree brings us, why do we abuse them so much? We cut them down for utility lines. We do not stake them properly. We bring diseases that are killing them. We plant them in very narrow areas. We put plant ivy because we do not like the stem. We put cement around them and wonder why are they breaking the cement and the sidewalk. We do construction projects without thinking about them. 
We kill them and leave their bodies hanging so that it's a sign for other trees that want to misbehave. We girdle the stem by not uh, taking away the ties. And then we badly prune them. Here on the left, we have a beautiful tree. And on the right side, we have a disc. I'm not sure what's worse, having the ugly tree in front of your house or coming out of that door every single day and watch an ugly tree. But if discs are not what you like, there's also cubes. There's also mushrooms. There's the shaggy on top. There's the basket. The old popular famous tree, uh, Christmas tree. Uh, the double ball. So we're going to mess up the shape of the tree and we're going to plant fake flowers to make it look pretty. Uh, the coat rack, that's a very popular when they top trees, which is really bad. And this, of course, is what you find along the city. And of course, pruning of palms, half the fronts are gone. Somebody actually got paid for that kind of a job. Somebody got ripped off. And of course, taking a little bit off of a palm tree, automatic death. So those palm trees are dead. So do not take a little bit off the top. And of course, tree will die. So they can survive, but with a lot of abuse, they will die. And here is a beautiful, wonderful tree uh, that are lining a commercial area. And it's probably the darkest burgundy colors that I've ever seen in a tree here in Long Beach. And the truth is hidden way below where somebody girdled the stem and they went to this step of putting cement to hide it. Now that is private property, so they don't really have to do this, but I do not understand why. But every single tree here is now destined to die because somebody girdled it or girdled the stem. And it's a slow death, but inevitable. But trees can fight back. So be careful. We want to be friendly to trees because they will begin to push things. And pound by pound, they are a lot stronger than we are. So when you start seeing this, that is a problem. So be careful, be kind, because when trees decide to attack, there ain't going to be any warning. And if this happens, I don't want my car to be there. If this happens, I don't want my family to be there. If this happens, I don't want my house to be any closer to that. And if this happens, I don't want to be driving along this street. So it is very important that we take care of trees. And we love them because they can actually hurt us really badly. So enough about bad trees. We want to hear good stories. Good stories about people who want to have more trees, as in the case of this uh, Senna or uh, Acacia, where it's a beautiful tree and the person wishes to have a second one but has no property or no soil to plant it. So he simply planted a picture, a portrait of it. Somebody who actually loves this tree. And when we start going around the city, we're going to find wonderful specimen. Of course, the beginning of Long Beach, Rancho Los Cerritos, has a couple of unique trees. Uh, it has an Osage orange, native to eastern United States. It has the oldest Italian cypress. It has one of the biggest Morton Bay fig, and also one of the biggest or the first ginkgo tree planted in Long Beach. The Osage orange goes dormant from eastern United States. As the Bixby's moved from the east to the west, of course, they brought trees that they knew from uh, back in the eastern United States that will remind them of home. And this is a product of that. It's still growing well, uh, wonderful in leaves, and of course, known for its brain-looking fruit that are not edible. Uh, beautiful, beautiful specimen. And here's the tree in the summer. And there's a tree with Brian standing next to it to show you the scale. And when we look at uh, the historic garden in La Rancho Los Cerritos, we're going to find the Italian cypress. The one on the right side is still there, uh, shaded by the tree by the Morton Bay. So that's still there. The one on the left is still there, looking really nice. But the one in the center is by far the best looking specimen of its kind. Now branching out, looking wonderfully and beautiful stem. As they get older, they begin to lose their columnar shape and start to open up. So that's the best, best Italian cypress you're going to find in the city of Long Beach. Uh, the ginkgo tree or maidenhair tree, a uh, little bit difficult to get a nice photograph because there's just so many uh, other trees surrounding it. Beautiful out of, uh, in, the, uh, in the winter for color, the male cones, 
and of course the female fruit uh, that happens to be made by this specific plant and there is a tree by itself. The Morton Bay from Australia planted circa uh, 1900s. Uh, they started bringing a lot of plants from different parts of the world and of course this is one that is very very beautiful and unless you have a humongous yard I wouldn't recommend you planting this one but you can see Mr. Brian right here standing right up by the tree so humongous specimen. It's from Rancho Los Cerritos we're gonna go to Rancho Los Alamitos there's a few things that are uh, common and a few things that are really unique. We have the only Chilean wine palm that was probably planted in the mid 70s. We have not one but two of the Morton Bay figs. Uh, we have one of the best uh, Italian stone pine. We have one of the few valley oaks. We have one of the few uh, uh, Tory pines and of course we have one of the best yucca trees here in Long Beach. So if we look at a map, a historic map, the palm would have been there, the Morton Bay figs, the pine, the other oak, and the other pine tree. So the Chilean wine palm, native to Chile, Mediterranean, perfect for this area. This is the best looking palm of its kind. It's actually the only one that I found here. And of course, the moment that I started hugging tree, trees, everybody wanted to get into the action. So it is now a posh thing to do. So hugging trees is good. So good for scale, beautiful leaves. And of course, wonderful, wonderful palm, the best one and the only one that I know in Long Beach. The Morton Bay figs planted about the same time as Rancho Los Cerritos. I mean, they were sisters or the same family, so I'm sure they share some of the plants. So they're still really, really beautiful plants. The Italian stone pine from the Mediterranean climate, this is where the pine kernels come from. Very difficult to get a good photo because it's just so massive that it's just not possible. The valley oak, native to Northern California, not so much the coast, but it's also very difficult. It was planted in their native garden, probably brought in from the wild. So, but it's still one of the oldest and the best looking uh, valley oaks here in, Southern, in Long Beach. Uh, and there's a uh, valley oak on the left in full leaf over the summer. And on the right side, we have the Torrey pine from San Diego County one of the trees that is probably in the greatest danger of extinction in the wild. Beautiful, beautiful tree. Again, difficult to get a good photograph because of all the other plants that are surrounding it. And there's the uh, needles and there's the actual pine. The yucca tree, the big species love succulents and of course they started a succulent garden. Most likely this was also dug up from the wild and brought over. And here's a beautiful base, beautiful stem. So this is by far the best yucca tree you're going to find in the entire city of Long Beach. So from Rancho Los Cerritos, we're going to go to Long Beach City College, PCC, yay! So at our horticulture gardens, we have the best bald cypress. And when we look at some of the old photographs, uh, here it is, very, very tiny, and a different photograph. Here it is in full leaf. And when we look at it right now, it's humongous native to Texas and Louisiana all the way into Florida, so a swamp cypress. And of course, here's the beautiful cones and leaves, and there's a tree as it begins to shed its leaves, and there's a tree without any leaves, and there's the leaves waiting for us to be picked up, for them to be picked up. So beautiful, beautiful tree, and this is how it looks right now. The best one in Long Beach. So from PCC, we move to LAC, boo. We have the <laughs> Laurel or Bay Nobilis or uh, Sweet Bay, the one that is used for cooking. We can see the beautiful outline of that canopy right there. And here it is, outside the English building. I'm sure you all knew about that one. The best one in the entire city. Uh, beautiful, beautiful Sweet Bay. So if you need any Sweet Bay for cooking, just go out there, grab some leaves, you got them. And there's a uh, tree in full flower. And of course, there's a tree with Mr. Brian for scale. And the tree went through a little bit of construction, but it's good that it's doing really well. So this picture was taken last week. So it's safe. It's not going to go anywhere. So from LAC, we're going to move across the street to the park. We're going to find the cork oak from the Mediterranean, Spain. And this is where the real cork for bottles come from, from the bark of the tree. So the tree is not looking that happy, but it is one of the 
biggest or the thickest girth on uh, the stem of any of the cork oaks found in Long Beach. And of course, it's respectable acorn. So from uh, the park, we're going to move a little bit to the west, right about this area right here. And when we get closer to this, uh, we're going to find that in that tree, we have the Java wax plum. And that's how it looks. So I was driving through here, and I hit the brakes, and I backed up, and I saw it. And of course, I've never seen this before. This is the most amazing tree of its kind, beautiful fruit. And of course, it took me an entire year to go back and finally speak with the owner. And the owner said he planted it about 35 years ago. We were allowed to go inside and finally took a photo of the flower and the fruit. We got a closer look at it and the owner gave us a fruit so that we can sample it. And it's found in the local markets now along the Korea, uh, Cambodian town. So from the freeway, we're going to go into Sunnyside Cemetery. We have from Australia our Banya Banya uh, pine tree planted circa 1917. And it is a beautiful, beautiful pine tree. There's the stem, there's the leaves, and about 60 foot from the, from the bottom, we're going to have a humongous pine cone that is going to collapse and fall on, hopefully not on somebody, but the pine cone can weigh, uh, weigh well over 10 pounds. So not a something nice that you want to have hit your head, but inside you're going to have humongous pine kernels that are edible, and you can use them for making anything that calls for pine nuts. So along PCH and close to Magnolia, we're going to find a Java wax plant. And when I started taking a photograph, one of the persons came out and said, oh yeah, we planted that about 30 years ago. The owner from this motel brought the seeds back from India. And of course now it is the most beautiful Java wax plum that you're going to find in the entire city. And those fruits are also available for purchase at some of the local markets in along Cambodia town. And there is a fruit that are sweet. And of course, almonds in Long Beach. I would have said, no way, impossible. I was proven wrong, proven wrong right here. I was walking by and I saw this tree. And of course, when I looked at it a little bit closer, I noticed a couple of wonderful things. We found almonds. And to my knowledge, they weren't supposed to grow here. The literature says they're not supposed to grow here. But here we go. We have a tree. And of course, I only took one fruit to take a photo. That's it, I swear. And of course, I took Brian to get the photo, but it was another year that went by before I finally got it to, uh, when it was flowering. And it is one of the most beautiful flowering trees with white flowers. So before I went into that area, I would have swore and betted the farm that almonds do not grow here in Long Beach. But again, I was proven wrong. And then when we go to the far west, here's Willow. That's now Wilmington, right there. We have a Buddhist temple and they have the best Buddha tree. Of course, this is the type of tree where Buddha sat under when he got enlightened. And this is by far the most beautiful tree that I've seen of its kind. And I don't understand why there's four more trees here when it can look much nicer uh, without them. But I do not know what the religions behind the four trees next to that Buddha temple or uh, Buddha tree means. And of course, beautiful, beautiful leaves. And beautiful fruit that is quite good. So the best Buddha tree is found on the west side of Long Beach. And then jackfruit would be another one. It's like jackfruit in Long Beach? No way. I was proven wrong once again because we found a jack tree fruit and I couldn't believe that it was there and that's a re relatively good size. And when I started looking closely at it, I noticed it was even bearing fruit. So it was a few weeks later when the owner came out and allowed us to go inside and it is bearing jackfruit right out of the stem. So jackfruits will grow here in Long Beach and there's a fruit and there's some that are even ripening here in Long Beach. So once again, I would have bet at the farm that cannot happen here in Long Beach, proven wrong once again. Uh, the kukui tree from Hawaii. So story has it, the owner, the last owner of this house was from Hawaii. She brought the seeds in, grew the tree and now it is the only kukui or candle nut wood that we have here in Long Beach. It's a beautiful tree. The person uh, from the home knew exactly what it was, beautiful flowers. And this is the state tree for the 
uh, state of Hawaii. There is the fruit or the candle nut, and of course they have 60% uh, oil, so they were used and instrumental in lighting the way as the Polynesians started migrating from island to island. They carried them with them. And of course, now when you go to Hawaii, you can buy necklaces and a lot of jewelry made out of this nut. And here's a tree doing really well. So the only kukui tree here in Long Beach. And of course, when we start heading towards the beach, we're gonna find Bixby Park. There's a few uh, wonderful things here. We have the best uh, English oak as well as three of the best uh, Australian flame trees. The English oak, dormant in the winter, and of course there's a person that didn't realize I was taking a photo, but it's great for scale. There's the stem, and there's the canopy with its beautiful leaves. I don't expect to find an acorn because there's so many squirrels that they will always beat me to them. Uh, the flame trees from Australia, three beautiful ones, the most beautiful ones in Long Beach. Uh, planted probably about 50 years ago or longer, and there's the flowers of this beautiful, beautiful tree. The rusty leaf fig, we can see right next to the church here in Carroll Park, uh, right there, and beautiful, uh, topping the top of the church, magnificent tree. Uh, again, you need a lot of room for this, but if you have it, it is a wonderful thing to have in your area. Uh, the Kapolin Cherry, going uh, to another historical area of Long Beach. Here's a house with uh, the oldest Kapolin Cherry, a uh, cherry that will bear fruit here in our warm climate, probably planted when the house was built. And of course, the lady told me the city wants me to prune it. Like, no, the tree is probably more important than your house because it's alive. <laughs> and here's the beautiful, beautiful flowers. And there's the actual fruit that are edible and of course, important for wildlife and people. And there's a tree uh, next to Brian and the owner. Uh, the wild lime, I found this a home in Long Beach. When I looked at the plants, I realized it probably belonged to a plant collector because there were some things that were very unusual or things that only I had them and nobody else. So, except I was proven wrong. And of course they had this uh, uh, wild lime or uh, sometimes referred to as Chinese pepper because it is used as a spice. And I, I'm, I still got to figure out what the exact ID for this tree is because I haven't taken the time. But it is those, uh, the fruit that is grounded up and used as a spice for flavoring food. Uh, and there is a tree next to Brian. So this home has a lot of unusual things. Uh, and. Uh, this is Rose Park, and in Rose Park we find the best cedar of Lebanon, and of course if you are familiar with history, the Armada, Spanish Armada, was made by cutting down the trees and making the boats. So in the wild they are in serious danger of being ex uh, going in, uh, uh, extinct, and of course all the wonderful temples in history had the wood that was made from cedar of Lebanon, or this cedar, which was very common in the Mediterranean mountains, and of course wonderful for wood, but this is the only one and the best one, planted circa 1914. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful specimen. And the quinine tree, right here on Redondo and Forth. I was driving by here and I told Brian, I, I saw something, went around the corner, parked right here, and lo and behold, I found the quinine tree. Now this is one example where I seriously miss ID the plant. I was expecting for it to be more like a plumeria tree with beautiful, magnificent white flowers. So I was expecting a humongous cloud. And when I kept going back, I started noticing buds on the leaves. So it was only two more weeks before I actually find the flowers. And here's the leaves. And then they trimmed it. So I had to wait another year before I could see the flowers. And when I found the flowers, it wasn't what I expected. The flowers are tiny, and this is the quinine tree from South Africa, and two flowers can barely go across a penny. So it's a little bit disappointing. It's not the big, wonderful, plumeria looking thing, but it's still beautiful in itself. So the only quinine tree, actually I have found two now uh, in Long Beach, and there's a fruit of this specific tree. So the tree is by far the most beautiful one of its kind in Long Beach. Uh, the Monterey Cypress is located on Seminole and 4th or 5th, 
and there's a canopy and you may know Dave Fralon, uh, the retired faculty, he had a flower shop here and in 1975 he didn't sell a cypress tree, he fell, threw it in the back, felt sorry for it later uh, for it. Later on he just shoved it in the ground and a couple of years later, voila, the best Monterey cypress probably planted circa 1975-6. So the best one you find here in the city of Long Beach on Seminole and Fifth. And then I was, as I was driving with my friend, Kathy, or the alumni, I was telling her, I'm, I'm looking for trees, blah, blah, blah. She pointed me ugly things. And then I said, no, no, no. And then when I looked to the right, I said, I want something like this. And I saw this white poplar, which in the literature is not supposed to be growing here in Long Beach. So beautiful, beautiful tree and if you notice below it has pure white leaves and that is exactly what attracted me and on the other side it has this really dark green foliage. Not supposed to be here but we have one that I found so far within the city and there is the tree uh, with Mr. Brian. And of course in another historic house we have the hydrangea tree from Madagascar and this is one of the most beautiful colorful flowering trees you're going to find uh, big, big, big hydrangea looking flowers. So from Madagascar, beautiful tree. And then in Naples Islands, or uh, along Naples, we find the traveler's palm also from Madagascar. And this is when I first saw it. And of course I stood looking at it, wondering if it was real. And finally I touched it and sure enough, it was real. And they started taking photos. Uh, the owner came out and later on she said, you're more than welcome to take some of the offshoots. So we have a couple of photos, of course, for our record. And this is how it grows in the Caribbean island. This is Martinique. So beautiful, beautiful palm tree by itself. Looks like a fan. That is a normal growth pattern. And of course, there is a palm tree or that plant in Naples. And a little bit of work taking away the baby plants. And then it turned into this. So the best specimen of the traveler's palm from Madagascar in Long Beach. So from uh, Naples Island, we're going to go into Park Estates. Yay! Known for having wonderful, beautiful trees. So of course, we have our tea tree from Australia. And there's a beautiful, beautiful twisting stem. Some people refer to that as being the perfect tree for kitty cats to climb and do their acrobatic action. So beautiful, beautiful tree. There's the flowers. And there's the cones or the fruit, the capsules. So right. In Park Estate, we also have the best prickly leaf paper bark, uh, planted in 19, uh, like 1979. Beautiful. I started finding a few more here and there, but this one by far is the best kept and the most beautiful of its kind. And then in Park Estate, we have the best coast live oak. So the California native oak tree, this would be the one that would be found in the canyons here in Long Beach and along the coastal areas of uh, California. Beautiful, beautiful stem. And of course, beautiful, beautiful canopy. There's the male flowers and there's the a respectable acorn. And the most beautiful, beautiful, beautiful coast live oak found in Long Beach. It's dead. Taken away to make way for a new garage. So that's how it looked immediately after and that's how it looks right now. So they have a beautiful view of the cables. So of course Park Estate, lots of money. They may have a Bentley and a wonderful Ferrari or a Rolls Royce that needs protection from the sunlight. But when we look closely at it, it was taken away to put two laundry, or laundry machines and a bunch of junk. Uh, so now we have, have to go to the west side to find the best coast live oak. So on Hill and Main, we have the best oak uh, in the backyard. Beautiful, beautiful tree. So this is now the best looking coast live oak that you're going to find in the entire city of Long Beach. And also in Park Estates, going back to Park Estates, we have the best Aleppo pine uh, from the Mediterranean areas of, the, of Europe. I, first time I was walking through there, I missed the tree. It was only until I got here and I looked back that I finally saw it. And of course, I was amazed. There is Mr. Brian standing by the tree. Beautiful, beautiful tree. And of course, beautiful canopy, beautiful, beautiful stem. And of course, that is also gone. Replaced by a beautiful lawn. 
So the moral of the story, if you look at statistics, if you plant a brand new tree in a poor area, it has very little chance of surviving because of lack of education and money and a bunch of other things. But the opposite is true. When you are a big, magnificent old tree in a well-to-do area, you have very little chance of surviving because if somebody comes in here and buys a home, then they will not mind spending $30,000, $40,000 to get you out of there. So in order for us to see more magnificent trees, we have to get out of the wealthy area and go to the north side of Long Beach. So north side of Long Beach by Market Avenue, perfect area. So Market and uh, close to Plymouth, we're going to find the Royal Poinciana from Madagascar. And this should be the Long Beach City College tree. So they should take away uh, those palm trees that are dead and they should replace them with this beautiful jacaranda looking trees that will bear beautiful shade, but also beautiful red flowers. So beautiful, beautiful tree. This should be LBCC tree. And there Mr. Bryce standing to next to it. And here's the tree over the summer when it was actually nice and clear away from the stem. And there's the flowers as it were, as it were like a, about two months ago. So from Madagascar, uh, also from Madagascar, we have the best Bismarck palm uh, purchased about 15 years ago from Home Depot. So the owner planted in the ground and now it is the most beautiful Bismarck palm that you're gonna find in the entire city of Long Beach and probably in California, as I'm told by the palm expert of the state. So there's a palm tree standing next to it. And there's a beautiful, beautiful palm tree. Uh, also close to the river uh, that we have the best black walnut. And when I was looking at this tree, the owner came out and said, are you looking for birds? He's like, nope, I'm looking at plants. He said, funny, I've never seen people look at plants. They always come through the river looking uh, for birds. And I said, oh, we're worse than they are we can keep working day and night and they only come out and watch the birds in the morning. But this is by far the best, most wonderful black walnut tree that you're going to find in the city. And of course, he said, take as many of the fruit as you want. Of course, there's nothing for you to eat inside, but he was kind enough to give me uh, enough fruit. And then, of course, we also have the golden uh, cloud tree. The first time that I've ever seen this tree uh, native to Jalisco, Mexico. I'm sure it was brought over by some of the people and of course planted there about 15 years ago. There's a beautiful stem and there's the branches and here's the tree as I left it one day and here's the tree when I came back to it. So beautiful, beautiful, colorful, golden yellow flowers and of course wonderful honey fragrance that can be smelled across the street. So this is a very rare tree to find around here. So from the golden cloud, we're going to go into the peppermint willow. And this, uh, the story has it, there was a scientist that lived in this house. And about 35 years ago, according to the neighbors, they helped him plant the tree. And now it has become one of the best, most beautiful peppermint willow that you're going to find. So this is natural for this uh, tree to have this stem that is going to be twisting. So beautiful, beautiful specimen. There's the leaves and there's the flowers. So be the best peppermint willow. And of course, when we go to the far north of Long Beach, we're gonna find the best Tory pine. Uh, the kids who live in this house call this the avatar tree because it's standing right in the middle of their yard and nothing else around it. So it is by far the best one. The story has it that in 1930, the owner built the house, brought pines from Oregon, and of course, somewhere along the line, the story gets disturbed because this is not from Oregon. But maybe he didn't know, and this is the only one that survived. Anything that was brought over from Oregon died. And of course, this is the cones of it. And there's a tree, and very difficult to get an entire photo because the tree is so massive and so tall. But this is the best uh, tree that you're going to find of its kind here in Long Beach. And we're almost certain that this might be the second biggest one in cultivation in California. I know the record is kept by some one in Santa Barbara. So whew, as we get to the end, of course, there's a lot of other trees that we keep on finding. And many of them, of course, will be a little bit more important later on. We have our uh, Nancy tree. That is a, tree, a fruiting tree from South America planted uh, close to PCC. 
We also have the happy tree or cancer tree used for medicinal purposes in China to treat cancer planted in El Dorado Park. We have the best um, Mediterranean fan palm. Also, we have the milk apple tree, which is a fruiting tree from Asia planted in the area. We have the only tejocote or Mexican hawthorn used for uh, making, making punch during Christmas for the Hispanic uh, community. We have the sapodilia, another fruiting tree that is becoming really popular among Asian and Hispanic cultures. We have the best um, Guadalupe fan palm growing here in Long Beach, or one of the best and the biggest one. And of course, we have the Indian gooseberry, the only one that I found in the entire city of Long Beach. So when I started looking around for trees, of course, you begin to notice how unique trees are, and each one have their own personality. So you begin to see differences in their faces. And of course, they all call your name, and they all ask us to spread one simple word or words, a couple of simple words, and that is that trees are good, and we should learn to take care of them. And with this, I, we came to the sunset, and I will thank you for visiting Long Beach and looking at all these wonderful trees that we have here. And that's the end. <laughs> any questions, if there are any questions? Yes. <clears throat> one, this is two. One is from we get number one, and then we'll go to two. <laughs> where is it possible to get that tree from Jalisco and plant a new one? Did you look at the map? <laughs> so we can just go, but like if I go to that person's house and say, can I have seeds or? Two things. The tree seeds? is in a public area. It um, looks to the city right now, but it is one that I am trying to propagate. So when you come to our plant sale, you can purchase your own tree from Jalisco. Okay. Uh, What's number two? The other one is, what, would, what tree would you recommend to be planted in Long Beach for someone who wants to put a new tree? For some of the ones that want? A, a new tree. Depends on where you're going to plant it. Because okay. if it's in, going to be in the parkway, the city has its own list and you need to get a permit from it. Otherwise, if it's going to be in your house, you can plant whatever you want. Anything of the ones that I showed, those are wonderful. But they're also rare, right? Hard to find? Not necessarily, but these are the best specimens you're going to find in Long Beach. Many of them are rare, and many of them you will not find, uh, or unless you're going to pay a lot of money. Yeah. Or bribe me so I can give it to you. There you go. Oh, thank you for a beautiful presentation. It's not actually about that. You know those very tall palms that they have planted? The Hollywood style palms. Uh-huh, the uh, Canary Island date palms. Canary Island. How long do they live? <sighs> Funny you mentioned that. It is expected that most of those palms are going to be dead in the next 10 years because yes. there is a disease that is being transmitted by chainsaws. So unless people stop pruning them with chainsaws, they're all going to die. Because if you look around the city, you're going to see some that are seriously declining. So if they stop using chainsaws, then they can be here for about 100 years plus. But right now, if the way things are going, expecting to lose them all by about in 10 years. Who decides what trees are planted at one city college? <laughs> uh, there is a planning committee. There is? <laughs> There's a college planning committee, and they also work in the landscape. Uh, and I think a lot of that, those decisions come from the grounds department because ultimately they are the ones who will take care of them. Did I get consulted on any of the planting? No. <laughs> Would I have changed things? We used, yes. to, have, we used to have some beautiful ganko trees. Yes. Huge, you know, old trees. Where? On the other side where the administration building is now. I don't remember ginkgo trees in that area. And I mean, yeah. here's a, I mean I've been around this college. They, uh, before they, they, when it used to be like a golf course kind of thing. It's been a long yeah. Longer, OK, before my time. So I, I can tell you. Yeah. Oh. Beautiful trees. Uh, they make those decisions up there. Yeah. We're only on the bottom here. Sorry. <laughs> Pack up the whole thing. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, it 
A combination of everything. It is our Mediterranean climate that allows for us to grow a lot of the tropical trees and a lot of the temperate trees. However, we cannot grow the extreme. A lot of the pine trees that you find back east cannot grow here because it's not cold enough. So that's why the almond is an example that it shouldn't be here, but it's here. And so, yes, we can grow almost every single plant. And the, it's also important to look at the different communities that are live here in Long Beach, because when you go to the west side where there's a high Filipino influence, you find a different group of plants. When you go into the like, east side or the beach side, then there's more of an Anglo influence. When you go to the north side, then there's more African American, Mexican, and of course along Anaheim, you have more of a uh, Cambodian influence. So as you walk through the city, you can start to see the differences in the landscape and how plants have changed based on who's moving into that neighborhood. Yeah. But the most important thing is big trees uh, in poor areas, they cannot afford to take them out of there. They're, they're safe. I'm worried about the ones on this side, uh, which is a serious problem. And the big pine tree, uh, apparently they only had permission to trim it. And then people came back and the tree was gone. And about, about a couple of months ago, I was approached by the main arborist who takes care of that area. And he's, of course, approached me and said, oh, I heard so much about you. Like, really? It's so only rumors, of course. And uh, I asked, do you know who trimmed it or who took it out? And he said, I did. And then uh, out of curiosity, pure curiosity, private area has nothing to do with me saying you shouldn't have done that. But I asked, how much did you charge them for that? Just curiosity, it was a huge tree, so I'm sure it was 20 plus, $20,000 plus. And when I said that, he was running out away from me because I don't think he wanted to answer that question and he was just finding an excuse to kind of move to the side and move away. But it, it, the same thing happened with those trees that weren't supposed to be taken out and if you pay the right person, they'll go there. No, that's not a problem. John? I, I think it was the second or third slide you had. You had a banner showing all the trees. Yes. You had that in. I am not ready to release that map until I complete the 3% of the city. So I think I need to go by your house. Yes. Because you, yeah, I have a map that's at your house. I haven't found your, your plans. So uh, until I complete those three percent, then I'm not ready to really okay. send it out and or do something with it. Are you using uh, any uh, geographical database for that? Or yeah, it's called Google Earth. <laughs> oh, Google Earth. <laughs> Google Earth. Uh, I know that you can get cameras that take a photo and they give you the GPS coordinates. Honestly, it's just my Olympus camera, and I go back and remember where I took the photo and just put a star in Google Earth. And that's where all the information is found right now. That's as high tech as I can get right now. <laughs> Unless the college is willing to sponsor me. <laughs> but that's a different story. So no, it's all Google Earth. But when it's ready, then I can upload it. Right now, I have not uploaded to Google Earth. But when that's when I'm ready, then and that will be available for the public. Some of us missed the fashion flower. Oh, shame shame we on did you. Another one. We did another one. Thank you, John. Okay. <laughs> Talk to John. I'm on the basically it helps co sponsor this, so maybe we can do it for next, next semester. Because we're already doing something for uh, November 23rd, this presentation for the whole community. So. Uh, I will be glad to come back here and give the pressure flower talks and if many people missed it. So that was a, that's that's a exclusive passion flower talk for PCC, so that's why you only get the second <laughs> second hand presentation over here at this summer campus. Well, thank you, and of course, any questions, uh, you know where my email is. <laughs> oh, you didn't talk about the field trip to China. I don't know. Oh.